is in, in uh, Leviticus chapter 27, you would actually give a fifth more of the value. So in other words, I go to Burger King and I want a BK Whopper and they say, we don't carry Whoppers anymore. And I say, I called on the phone, I was on my way here and you said you had Whoppers in stock. And they say, well, sorry, no more Whoppers, no more flame broiled anything. And, but we'll give you a McChicken sandwich, which is equal value, and we'll refund you $1, uh, which is one-fifth of the $5 Whopper. So here, we'll give you this for free, and we'll give you this to compensate for it. So in other words, uh, if something's worth five-fifths, you get something that is worth six-fifths. You pay for the property plus 20%. You see that? So if you owe somebody $100 worth, you give them $120 worth. That's the math of it. Don't get confused by the math. It just means more so that the ministry doesn't suffer because of your broken vow. Now let me ask you a question. You think Jephthah knew about Leviticus chapter 27? Yes. Okay. There are arguments that are made, and this of course would, I think, just squelch those arguments, that Jephthah, first of all, was offering anything that came out of his house. Let me ask you something. When something comes out of a house, what makes it come out of the house? Life. Life, okay. It had to have been a living thing that he understood he was valuing. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Did you know that it was not kosher for the children of Israel to live with the goats, chickens, and pigs? In other words, the house was not the barn. So when Jephthah made the vow that he's going to promise to God to give God the first thing that came out of his house, he wasn't thinking it was going to be a chicken or a pig or a dog. Of course, we know those things would not have been in the nation of Israel. Any of those three would have been unclean, but I like to talk about them. Um, wouldn't have been any of those things. Wouldn't have been a sheep. Wouldn't have been a lamb that came out of his front door. Jeff, though, was speaking of that which would have been his possessions, and it would have been either his servants or his family. Now, as regards the children of Jephthah, what was there? His family or maybe friends. Okay, they were family. Jephthah's children were family. Okay. Oh, well, no. Brother Diaz, just wait. <laughs> he only had a daughter. I'm going to pick on this guy. He only had a daughter. He had no children other than a daughter. Matter of fact, Jephthah didn't have illegitimate children because I think they would have been mentioned as children in his family, wouldn't they have? If Jephthah had a child by a concubine or a harlot, do you think that child would have been mentioned? He would have been particularly sensitive to that, I'm pretty sure. Just use our brains a little bit. God gave them to us and wanted us to use them when we study His Word. If Jephthah had any children at all, even if they weren't from his legitimate wife, they would have been counted as the children of Jephthah, both because of the culture of the time and secondly, because he would have been particularly sensitive to not being counted because of his personal experience. Okay. Was Jephthah promising God when he vowed a sacrifice of a person? <clears throat> Why not? God didn't allow him to sacrifice. He didn't do that. Who else is coming out of the house? His daughter's coming out of the house, not a male. Yeah. But according to Leviticus chapter 27, couldn't he have paid for the daughter if he, he was have, yeah. dedicating her to service? But that, that's not what that's not where we're, where we're going with it. Uh, we're going more like with a, with a uh, sacrifice of, uh, of the human kind. Yeah, we're talking about human sacrifice human here. Sacrifice, yeah. Okay. And the question is, does God require human sacrifice ever? No. The answer the question is no. Second question is, what did Jephthah promise God? That way. Let's look down at the verse again. Let's read the scripture. Verse 31 It shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return to meet me, by the way, this wouldn't have been his dog, and this wouldn't have been an animal. Whatsoever cometh out of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. What's the scripture say? For the first 400 years that this scripture was penned, it was understood 
that Jephthah intended to sacrifice with burnt offering the individual who came out to meet him. After 400 years, several rabbis said, you know what, God doesn't require a burnt offering, and Jephthah didn't do that. And so they came up with this, uh, they looked to the verse that, uh, they, they just said that's not what happened. And then the third explanation that finally evolved, if you look at history, historically speaking, is really uh, under um, Augustine in the church came up with the theory and you can look just historically what, what individuals that loved the Lord and studied Scripture believed. And Augustine came up with a theory that uh, he dedicated this girl to never bear children. Um, verse 31 of Judges chapter 11 says that whatever comes out to meet me, I'm going to offer to the Lord for a burnt offering. Okay? Now we've got a problem with that. You still could have made the burnt offering without, without actually... Did but God actually sacrificing the thing that came out of Well, that's what we're trying to determine. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah. Folks, I can explain to you, I can give you reasons all night why I am 100% certain from the Scriptures that Jephthah gave his daughter a period of time and that she, much like Isaac, surrendered to death at the hand of his father Abraham. Much in the same manner as Isaac, she gave her life. She said, You promised God Give me a period of time to bewail my virginity. In other words, I don't have a future. And I would submit to you that if this lady had remained a virgin the rest of her life, the children of Israel wouldn't have gone out once a year in a, as a holiday and celebrated the fact that she remained a virgin. They wouldn't have done that. Did you do this today, Pastor? That's a good question. I don't think... Let, let's be, I, I'm not going to make a comment about that. I don't believe so. They celebrate holidays that really don't have any scriptural. Uh, anyway, yes. What about thou shalt not commit murder? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about it? Okay. I want to help you this night, tonight. Not me. I want you to be helped from the scripture with this matter of vows. <coughs> this matter of vows. We're going to look at vows in a couple of areas. We looked at Proverbs chapter twenty and verse twenty-five, which says, um, "It's a snare to the man." who devoureth that which is holy, and a... Um, man, I can't read my, my writing and I can't remember it. Um, and afterward, or after a vow to make an inquiry. Inquiry. So after a vow to change your mind. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. You've been under the preaching in this church long enough. You know what this passage of Scripture I think is about. Let's look at it. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. There's a simple answer, by the way, tonight. There's a simple answer, but this is, this is hard. This, this is hard to swallow, isn't it? Ecclesiastes chapter five: Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do not evil, that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God's in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldst not vow than that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angels that it was an error. Is this saying the same thing that Proverbs 20, 25 says? It's after a vow to make inquiry. In other words, when you promise, pay that that which thou hast vowed, is what the Bible says. And it says, Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? Let me just simply say this. I'll be glad to argue with you all night about this, and I'll win. Jephthah sacrificed his daughter as a burnt offering in order to keep his vow to God Almighty. The Scripture teaches that he literally did you and I need to make some application from it because that's why it's in the Scripture. You know and I know God doesn't require a burnt offering. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. In other words, you can't make a vow to God that it will hold you to that will actually be sin. Because God does not understand a lie, my friend. And so we need to look at this and instead of 
trying to decide whether or not God would allow a burnt sacrifice. God required a burnt sacrifice.